Hi, everyone, and welcome to the My Message podcast. My name is Kai Mochitani, and I am your host for today's episode. Every episode, it'll be me right here. And on the My Message podcast, we are working to make our messy life our message. And so without further ado, let's get right into today get right into today's episode um we're gonna talk about easter and i kind of just want to dedicate this whole episode to my faith and to um you know maybe people who celebrate easter but don't know the meaning behind easter maybe somebody who's so skeptical about their faith that they just want to put like their big toe in and just hear about it i'm gonna share some awesome god stories that i've had we're gonna talk about um you know jesus and about holy week and easter and the whole nine yards and so um let's get into it but before we do i know you might see this drink on youtube um it's my little celsius today and i know they're so terrible for you but like literally they help me so much i don't know if it's a mind thing but i gotta break past that barrier Besides the point, before we talk about Easter, let's talk about Holy Week. Holy Week is the week before Easter and the spiritual events that's happened in the Bible um, before Easter. And so the Sunday before Easter Sunday is Palm Sunday. And that's where Jesus triumphantly enters Jerusalem and people are like fanning palm fronds on him like just cheering for him um i learned this in church they were yelling hosanna hosanna which basically could mean you know hosanna help me like jesus like everyone wanted to see him while he's walking in to jerusalem and so people were like hosanna hosanna help me or it could be hosanna hosanna praise you i praise you god like save us like thank you for saving us or it could be hosanna like save me god i need you jesus and so um that's that. And then on Thursday was uh, Jesus' last supper with his disciples and the day that one of his 12 disciples, Judas, betrayed him. And we're going to talk about that. Um, then it talks about Good Friday, which was a few days before Easter Sunday. And this is where Jesus faced six trials before he's turned over to be crucified. And on Good Friday, he passes away on the cross and silent saturday is when the guards uh seal his tomb and put this big massive rock right in front of his tomb that literally like could not be moved and then on sunday jesus rides from the rises from the dead and defeats death and this was on the third day so um let's talk about the last supper because i feel like that's what happened before easter um you know the evening of the last supper jesus sat down at the table with his um, disciples to eat his final meal before being crucified on the cross as they dined together you know he told the, he told the 12 disciples um one of you would betray me and all of them were like is it me god is it me jesus like is it me is it me is it me And then Jesus took bread and wine and asked God the Father to bless it. He broke the bread into pieces, giving giving it to his disciples, and he go and he said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, which is where we get communion. So um bread and wine, communion, yay. Um, that was the Last Supper. And, you know, actually during the Last Supper after the last supper they went him and his 12 disciples uh, actually judas wasn't there he was he snuck out of dinner and went with the romans and uh, roman authorities and basically made a bargain with them for money and um told him i'll lead you to jesus and so him and his i guess 11 disciples jesus and his 11 disciples went into a garden to pray and as they were there judas you know, walks in and with these soldiers and with these people that were here to arrest Jesus. And um, Judas kisses Jesus. And Jesus knew that, you know, like he would be kissed and Judas would betray him. Like he knew this all along. And um, Jesus basically says, 
to Judas, fellow, for what purpose are you present? Answering his own question, Jesus says, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? And as, you know, the soldiers are moving toward Jesus slowly, but surely, um, the disciples were like so confused. Like, should we take a sword and just like, kill him? Like, what, what should we do? And so without even before Jesus could even respond, Peter takes one of the, one of the swords and just slashes, um, one of the soldiers, um, Malchus with, um, by cutting off his ear and Jesus knew that that's not what he wanted his disciples to be doing. And so he crushed Malchus's ear, touched his ear and he healed his ear. And, um, he told Peter, you know, return your sword to its place for all those who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Um, you know, Jesus was willing to be captured. He explains, you know, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must take place this way? And that was in Matthew twenty six fifty two. So, um, if you want to read that part in the Bible, um, and you know, this then leads to Christ's, um, crucifixion. In um, Mark, in Luke, in John, and in Matthew are all um, stories of how Jesus was crucified and how Jesus rose from the dead and the Last Supper and everything. This is all like their own witness stories. And so this is from like one of like one of the books and this is the book of Matthew. So if you want to read um, like all about the crucifixion, read in Matthew 27. And then if you want to read about the resurrection, read in Matthew 28. Uh, I want to, I would sit here and read it all to you, but I would just really want you guys to get this and not, you know, feel like I'm just like throwing this down your throat. So I just want you to get like the whole story. Um, and so then Jesus was crucified on the cross on Friday, on Good Friday. He was given a crown of thorns, beaten along the way, mocked and humiliated. You know, there was a crowd of people who were saying, you know what, kill him. He is not the king. He is not the son of God. Kill him, kill him. And then there was also people in the crowd, like Jesus's mother, who was just so heartbroken and just so sad. Um, and so, you know, I think crucifixion is like one of the hardest most vulnerable way to be you know to die um sometimes you know when you're crucified back then when they would crucify people and they didn't die yet they would cut off the legs or break their legs but jesus knew that not one bone in his body would be broken and his like they didn't they did not break his legs in fact they like stabbed his side for him to bleed out and pass and you know oh it's just so sad but um just so beautiful that Jesus was able and willing to do that for all of our sins for eternity and to just live up in heaven and be like our guardian angel and to just watch over us and um create this incredible life for us um his last hours on the earth was you know like in the middle of the day and in those last three hours of um before Jesus you know passed it went the daylight went dark it was dark from noon to like 3 p.m um while he was up on the cross and so after he passed he was buried in a tomb and this is where the resurrection this is where Easter comes into play and this is when um they put this uh like soldiers put like this big humongous massive stone in front of his tomb and um on Easter he rose from the dead and then he appeared to uh, like 500 people is what I read and um so then people knew like oh my gosh he is the son of man or he is the son of God and so um now he lives up in heaven. He rose from the dead, back alive. He defeated death to um, to now be living as our father in heaven. And so that's kind of the story 
of Easter and um, I I don't know I just feel like we all could post on social media he is risen or we can all celebrate Easter or talk about Easter but if we don't know the meaning behind Easter and the events leading up to it and we don't know about Holy Week then I think we're all defeating the purpose here of you know this incredible story and how awesome Jesus is and how he died on the cross was humiliated was um he bled out for us for our sins and he defeated death he defeated death on the third day in which he said he was going to there is a part in John where um it talks about Jesus clearing the temple and I remember reading this and I was reading the book of John and it was that there is this temple that was took like 43 or 46 years for it to be built up and at the temple there was people there who were using you know it for bad and who were using it to like get money and whatever and so um Jesus told these people he said destroy the temple um within three days and he said what do you mean it's been it's taken like 40 plus years for this to be built and they didn't know that the temple he was talking about was his body in three days he would you know so I don't know that was just really cool like Jesus knew this all along and so um I don't know it's just like this is just such an incredible key part of the bible and I feel like when we celebrate easter we just need to know this before we really celebrate it um and then with that being said I want to share a few god stories of east or not of easter but like a few god stories that um are personal to me um I heard this um sermon being preached one time and it was about how you know you can tell people the good news of the bible and um people could be interested but what if you shared your own encounters and your own stories with God because nobody can take that away from you people can talk so so poorly about like the word not saying that that's I'm not saying that that's right at all whatsoever but people can talk so poorly about the word but they cannot take away your own encounters with God and I was like whoa that's so good and so it would be Um, I feel like a shame of me or I'd be doing myself and God like a disservice if I didn't share some incredible stories that he's put in place in my life. Um, One story just happened literally today is when I'm filming this, but um, on Sunday, Palm Sunday, but it happened at church. I'm, I started this new like Bible study book and it's by this incredible woman, Christine Kane. And, um, actually one of the families I nanny for, they got me this book, but it's a Bible study and it's just so incredible. And I was just at the part in my Bible study. I just completed it like two days ago, I think, but it was about how, um, in the book, in the book of Luke, where they were talking about a lost sheep, a lost coin and a lost son. And, um, you know, I've never heard this before, even though I read the book of Luke, I never really like honed in on this one part. And so it was just talking about like, you know, we are lost, we were lost, but now we are found. And what is lost and that like we can find and what is that one person or that one thing that we can find? And it talked about a sheep, a coin and a son. And then today at church, this was the entire message. It was all about the sheep, the coin and the son. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. And so I got to really like get a grasp like on that word, like so much deeper. And like, I knew the story and it was just like really cool because I felt like out of all the books in the Bible, out of all the verses, out of all like the times that I could have, you know, done this one day in the Bible or my Bible study like how could literally like I hear this message and this is my first message back that I heard in person from my trip and then on my other God story is that on March 19th I went to a Brandon Lake concert and Brandon Lake he's a worship singer I don't know if anyone's heard the song like Gratitude or Graves into Gardens and he was performing the day before I left for Japan and I was so anxious about Japan I was like oh my gosh like I am I could throw up at the thought of it kind of thing like I was so nervous to like meet the family I've never met to like have a lot of unanswered questions from my childhood like be answered on this trip because we've never been to Japan before um where my dad 
like grew up and like left when he was in middle school or high school um and so and then like being with my family it was just like a lot of feelings during this um like moments before leaving the trip and then being on a 12-hour flight like I've never done that before I don't do good on airplanes or just like doing good I don't do good on like long long airplanes and um I don't do good just sitting and like doing nothing for like 12 hours like that was so hard for me or I knew that would be so hard for me and so going into this night I was already really anxious and I just like was just like my head was all over the place and so I almost like literally canceled on my concert before because I was like so like just so in my head anyway um we get to the concert a little early and we want to see the opening act named Benjamin Williams Hastings he is so incredible like so good he's so good um but we were sitting down and uh, you know, something happened with one of the girlfriends that I went with, and so we waited a little bit and um, didn't really love where we were seating, like being like where we were seated because it was just so crowded, so many people around us. It was like very overstimulating, and so um, I scoped out like where we could like sit, like where there were open seats where we would have more space to breathe, and then I found these like spots. I don't know there was a lower bowl and then like the middle bowl and then like right above the middle bowl there was like seats like that um people in wheelchairs could sit at but there was actually like real seats in this one section and so those were open I was like oh my gosh like what if we all sit there and so we all sat there and it was so perfect because like we felt the like there was like we felt like we had space, we could worship, we could move our hands, we could like, it was just so like literally so perfect. I can't even explain it to you. And so we go back into the concert, we sit in these seats and we, um, you know, start worshiping. And I've never experienced like being prophetically read or like someone prophetically reading the room, but, and I didn't know that this was going to happen. And so this night was called Miracle Nights and Brandon Lake has just such a pure and good heart. And he was saying, you know, I want a miracle to happen tonight. Like this is Miracle Nights. This is like, there's going to be a miracle that's happening. And so they were prophetically reading the room first. They were like, I, I could feel like last night, um, someone was debating on committing suicide and I just want that spirit of suicide to just leave, go, leave in Jesus' name. And so they kept doing that with a bunch of different spirits. Um, and he paused and he was like, if you need a miracle tonight, I want you to be brave enough to raise your hand. And I was like, oh my gosh, like my heart was pitter-pattering. And usually when my heart pitter-patters like that, that's like telling me you you need to do something uncomfortable. Like you have to raise your hand right now. And so I rose my hand and he said, now if there is anyone remotely close to you who has their hand raised and you don't, I want you to go over and pray for that person. And so I like this woman approached me with my hands raised my eyes were like my I was bawling my eyes out I was like oh my gosh because like the songs and what he was saying was just so like fitting for me and so this woman approaches me and she hugs me and she um she grabbed like the back of my neck like 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 literally like she moved my hair like grabbed the back of my neck held me and she I don't know if anyone's ever heard of like speaking in tongues but she like spoke to me in tongues and she um like prayed for me in tongues and speaking in tongues is like the direct language of like connecting to the holy spirit some people can some people can't I don't know exactly too much about it but I'm and I've never like had someone like pray for me like in tongues like that anyway so I'm standing over like right at like the edge of this railing and she's hugging me holding the back of my neck she's like praying for me speaking over me in tongues she like pushes me forward 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 and I just felt like I was falling 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 like so anxious so anxious and then like I get to a point where like I just feel like something just leaving my chest like just like this like this like feeling of like just something leaving my chest like this release if you will and then she like stops me and then she pulls me back up and then she goes do you feel better and I was like honestly like I feel like this release and like I would never lie about this like I would never like like I have no point of like sharing this story if it wasn't real like this is literally exactly what happened to me like I can't even explain it um and I just was like honestly I felt like this like kind of release and 
then she's like, oh my gosh, good. And then she was like, prayed for me. I told her a little bit about like my situation and like what was happening and, you know, like how I am different in my family for my beliefs and all this kind of stuff and so then she prayed for me regularly and then she was like giving me like breathing and like ways to connect with God kind of like techniques of when I feel anxious and she's like I feel like you have like a lot like in your chest like you keep grabbing your chest and um that's like where my release came from and I was like no I know like I feel like that too like when I get anxious it's a lot like in my like upper chest and so she's like, I want you to just hold that there and just deep, like deep breathing, like, and like holding your chest. And I was like, okay. And like that really helped me. And so then, um, the rest of the concert was just so incredible. I did not feel an ounce of anxiety about my trip. I told my friends, I was like, I feel like I can get on this airplane right now. No lie. Like, I feel like I can get on this airplane right now. <laughs> like, and I didn't feel like that at all ever since booking this trip. Um, and so then we were like leaving the venue and my friends were, I was like, guys, I just have to tell you about my experience. Like, did you guys see me? And they're like, no, we really didn't. Like, we weren't watching like what happened. And he goes, and they were like, and while you were being prayed over, Brandon Lake and his team were saying like, um, and this is for families reuniting, like broken, like the spirit of broken families, like go leave your, like not welcome to you in Jesus name. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy because that's what like, it was a lot about and like I was being reunited with my family. My dad was being reunited with my family. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so crazy. I didn't hear that at all, like at all when I, when she was speaking to me and praying over me in tongues, it was like the weirdest, craziest, most awesome experience ever. Like I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never, like I've been so skeptical about like prophetically, like being read or like spirits and stuff like that and like deliverance ministry all that kind of stuff like I've been so so skeptical of it and this really put my foot in the door of like I'm actually not afraid of it anymore and like this helped me so much like I can't even explain it to you like the Holy Spirit y'all is like so real so real like I I, I have no point of like sharing this story or like I don't even know how I can make it up like this is so real and so good if you open up your heart to it and just give it a try like Oh my gosh. So I just want to offer up to everybody and anyone, if you are, if your family doesn't celebrate Easter or if you want to go to an Easter service at Saddleback Church in Lake Forest, I would love to invite you there and I would love for you to come because I feel like this can just be like the start of a new life for you if you don't know the love of Jesus yet and you haven't experienced that yet. Um, and then last thing before we close up today's episode I have these little like talking or conversations with purpose cards and these are for Christians and each color means something different I don't know exactly like what color means what but there's a red a blue a green and a yellow and so I'm gonna pick um one from each oh here it is categories okay so yellow is my faith journey so let's pick a yellow card and let's see who taught you the most about your faith hmm Jake's mama, Shar Stammer, taught me the most about faith. Okay. Um, green is the world around us. Um, okay, let's see. Let me pick one. Okay. Do you think there is a greater purpose to all of human history? Do I think there is a greater purpose to all of human history if so what I feel like there is a like a greater purpose to all of what's happened in our history and that's to lead you to Jesus and to help you find God in your heart and I feel like everything that's happened in our history um Jesus didn't let do to break us and it actually happened to help us and it's just the way we look at things and so yeah um blue is personal beliefs Okay. I'm kind of nervous for these, to be honest. Oh my gosh, how perfect is this? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? What do you understand it to be? I do believe in the Holy Spirit and I understand it to be um, Jesus' love living in you and everyone has the Holy Spirit living in them and so um, it helps guide you and your heart. And then red is Bible truths. Oh no. Okay 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 what is hell um just the opposite of heaven it's a like terrible place where 
you are tormented and live eternity away from Jesus. Um, but yeah, that's all that I have for today. I love you guys so, so, so very much. Thank you for listening to this. Happy Easter and cannot wait to hear from you guys soon. Um, also like feel free to send me any kind of literal feedback ever because, um, I love to hear it and I can't wait to see where this podcast takes me. I love you guys so much. Have the best day ever. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening. Tune into the next episode. And while you're at it, leave a rating and review to boost the podcast algorithm to ensure that we grow organically. I love you guys so much. Have the best day ever.